to another video. Today I have the lovely quilting queen with me, uh, Jane. If, uh, quite a few of you have been asking what mum and dad's real names are. They don't have real names, it's mum and dad. No, this is Jane and we are going to do mum's second lookbook because she has been busy and has made lots of the things. The, we're going to also do her knitting in this one because lots and lots of you have been asking for uh, which patterns she's used and what you thought of them and how you've modified them and that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, got a big bowl next to us. <laughs> we have. And, and we've even bought the book with all the patterns in it so that we can actually tell you exactly what they're called. That's the plan anyway. Right, so what was the first thing that you knit? Uh, the first thing on it was the Hortensia uh, one for you, which yes. was a bit of a disaster. But it helped me to learn <laughs> yes, apparently American knitting. Can, or Canadian. Oh, Canadian. Canadian. Apparently the Canadian knitting language and the English knitting language are different. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they so, are. Yes. But once you worked out what they meant by one thing, then it was like, oh, that's actually this. Yes. Yes, so, I couldn't work it out because I've never knitted from the top down either. And in the round. <laughs> and in the round. And so it was a new experience completely. Yeah, because everything you've knit before was in flat and then you'd yes, seam it. Yes, and seam it. And actually some people would like um, tips on seaming. Okay. Uh, it, when you when you next do your next... Oh, you're, the jumper you're knitting at the moment, is that in the flat? Yes, it's uh, one of the ones that was sent to us at Christmas in the box. Ah, uh, now who said this those? Was it Susie? I think it was. It was the first one that we got, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, she it sent Susie. some really old knitting yes. pattern books. And um, I found this uh, short cardigan, which is what I want to go with my green shirt, yes. which I'll show you later. Yes. Um, and it is old fashioned, so it's all flat. So we, and could, we could do a seaming video on that, couldn't we? we how, could. you, how you do it. So, yes. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Anyway, so yeah, that was the first one that you knit. Yep. And it was in a variegated wool that I'd got from the local wool shop that was next door to the tunnel and it didn't quite fit. No. It was it was too tight, too tight around up, yeah. here. Yeah. So because I'd done it wrong. <laughs> but it like you say it was a learning curve. Yeah. So that one got donated. Yeah. And you now knit me, as you guys have seen, I have lots of hortensias. They're quite quick, aren't they? They are. They take me about a week yeah. in the evenings. Yeah. yeah, in front of the TV. Sorry if they're, yeah. they're boring though, aren't they? No, I'm in there, you know. <laughs> Mindless knitting that you can actually concentrate knitting. on the TV, which you know because that annoys Dad, doesn't yeah, it? it does. you know, if you're doing something difficult and he's like, can you watch that bit? Rewind, yeah. right. show you again. <laughs> Mum liked variegated thread or the variegated yarn, so... In the same shop, we found uh, this wool. Isn't it pretty? Which is very pretty. It's definitely my autumn colours. With a bit of bling in it. Yes. To appeal to little bit of gold magpie. bling. Yes. And um, it was actually, the pattern is in a short one, which is what I'm wearing. I did this next. But I wanted a long one to go over trousers and things. The only problem I find with uh, variegated wool is it gives a lovely um, pattern. But on the pat back, the pattern is much tighter, obviously. That's because it's this one's another flat knit. Yes, a flat knit. And seamed. Yes. So Whereas I could adapt the pattern. Yeah, that's a good if idea. If you knit it from front to back. Yes, I could. And now that you know how sleeves... Because yeah. the sleeves being flat wouldn't matter so much, would it? No. But look at the buttons as <laughs> well. I'm going to do close-ups. And I'm actually, mum, mum may not remember from the last time we did one of these videos, but she gets to do twirls. Oh, scary. Yes. But the buttons are great fun. I found them in Malaysia, and I never knew what I would use them for. But they're actually all of the colours of the cardigan. Yes. So... They're and fun. you you wore it to the knitting and stitching show last year. Oh, didn't you? I did. And got lots of people stop her and say, "Did you knit that?" <laughs> yes. yes, yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. And so the next one was was this one, which is a smaller version of that, shorter version. And the thing I learnt on this was when I did the put this front piece on. What do you button, call it? Button band. Button band. I did it too tight the first time, uh, so it wouldn't it didn't sit right. So I then had to get it off, and actually undoing is really difficult. But I did manage, but it's not a perfect finish. They call it frogging, don't they? Frogging. Because it yeah. sounds like a croak when yeah. you... Yeah, it's a pain in the neck, yeah. especially with fluffy wool. <laughs> yeah, it's stuck. Have we got the pattern name in here? Mm -hmm. There it is. Oh, it's 
So it's a cabaret double knit and it's 9184. And um, oh, it comes in a cropped version, I didn't know that. Oh, that is, that's what it was. And oh, that's the cropped version. This is the cropped oh, version. That's so you can make it as cropped as you like, depending on. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a nice knit, that. So, do you want to do more knitting? More knitting? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a, um, as you can see, a kind of jerkin. Uh, kind of, yeah, waistcoat. Waistcoat. Short sleeve cardigan. Yes. Cover up. Cotton for the summer. Yes. Uh, with quite a nice leafy pattern. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, which is I don't quite useful. I don't understand how you make those big holes when it doesn't <laughs> all unravel. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. That's... It's basically clever knotting, isn't it? Uh, well, yes, it's um, winding, a, winding the wool over in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see if we can dig the pattern out with yes. this one. Um, this is cashmere and it's, oh, it's so nice to knit. <laughs> You've got and that. It's got a very fine little pattern on it. Which should just be about, yeah, I think you should just about be able to see it. Yes. And I got it wrong the first time, so I had to redo one side. You had to frog it. Yes, <laughs> I did. I frogged it because it's cashmere. So, yeah. And I wanted it to be perfect and it's and got buttons on the back. We got the pattern it's from cashmere red and it's the harlow cow neck short sleeved top and you got the wool from the knitting and stitching show last year last didn't you year. and yeah. it was one of the ones that she had decided to discount or they were doing a new dye lot so she was selling this one at half price wasn't she mm. and it was still an expensive jumper at half price because mm. i wanted some cashmere to make um a hortensia black cashmere to make a hortensia out of and when i worked out it would be nearly 100 pounds it was like oh <laughs> But Perhaps it's not. It's it's <laughs> no, it's beautiful. And then we invested in our first cone at that show. Didn't we, we did. Yeah, we invested in the first cone, which is alpaca and it's four ply. Yeah, a lighter weight, isn't it? Lighter weight, yes, the lightest you can get. And again, this is lovely to knit with. You've seen Sean's. Yeah, shrug. I made. Mum made me a little. I made. <laughs> uh, Mum made me a little shrug. So mum's made me, it's a pearl alpaca designs and mum made me a little shrug out of this which you have seen it went with my savannah dress that I did the sew along for and um, then you also had, there's still a bit left on the cone isn't there? Yes, yes one more jumper's worth. Mm. Yeah. Buying cones is quite economical really isn't it when wow. you think about Absolutely. The, um, the cost of the wool if you bought yes. it ball by ball. Yeah. Definitely worth doing. I hope I haven't lost it. Ah, oh, there it is. It's called Sweater Girl. So it's another UK alpaca uh, pattern. Mm. It's really nice to wear. I took it on holiday, didn't I? You I did. It and the brown. And you got buttons on the back of that as well? Yes, buttons on the back. Pretty buttons. Right, so the next one is called Shalana. It's from Ravelry, so I will include the details down below. And again, it's alpaca, which I bought locally in our shop Rainbow that's closed, which is oh, really sad. Yes. Um, I did make an adjustment to this on the neckline. Um, oh yeah, because it's a boat neck. Because there's a boat neck on the pattern, which don't really suit me, and I don't like them too low here. So I put on a neckline. With ribbing. With ribbing. Yes. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, I, I prefer it. And um, made one of these for my daughter-in-law in, -law in yeah, the big bird, cream. Big Bird saw it and went, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'd like one of those. And you will have seen that in the pleated and gathered skirt tutorial. She was wearing, Big Bird was wearing that in her twirling. So, yes. But it was a bit short for her. I think I must have made this one much longer because she tried it on. It was the right length. She still likes it though. Oh, yeah, she likes it. Yeah. But I must make her another one. Mum's also made two coats. So Mum, we, this again, you saw this at the show, didn't you? No, I looked for this pattern. Um, I got it offline. Or... Ravelry then? Yes, I can't. No, I, I actually sent for it and they sent it like this. Oh, it, yeah, it's laminated. Yes. And it is the Ladies Sophisticated Mohair Cable Coat. Mm. 
and you don't have it here with you but I will put in a twirl of mum wearing it outside. She's, as she said, she made, she's made two of these. Um, she made the first one and didn't take my advice and measure herself. <laughs> Um, do that. <laughs> to to find out which size she should make and so she just it's too forged, big <laughs> forged ahead and made it and yes it was too large and uh, i had it for a while and you've seen me wear it quite a few times and then big bird it's it's a lovely color but it's not i prefer blues and greens mm. so and big bird loved it so mm. big bird has now inherited that coat and to be fair it actually fits big bird yeah, it looks beautiful it, it yeah, fits big bird better than it fits me because Big Bird is Big Bird. Um, but, so you then bought yourself some Noro. Yeah, some beautiful Noro in the same kind of colour scheme. Yes, um, and she's made the one that she's uh, wearing in the twirls outside. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was like knitting a blanket, wasn't it? Yeah. It keeps you warm in the winter, and it does stretch a bit, yes. yes my husband, you, it's Danny. It started above the knees, it's now just <laughs> above the ankles. You can't hang them up. Mm. So it's now in a drawer. Yes. Yes. Lying down. But yes, there's that one. That's the one that everyone's really interested in. Where's the pattern? I don't know. <laughs> in my head. <laughs> so this is the one that Mum took with her. She took the massive cone of wool and took this with her to Lanzarote. So this is a well-travelled. A well-travelled coat. Knit. Um, yes. And it's the one that you saw in the vlog recently. And the one that mum decided the sleeves were boring, so she added extra cables to them because, yeah. you know, life's too short to be yeah. simple. You've got to have nice. Yes, and it's... And I love this. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah, Big it's Bird. my favourite. Me and Big Bird also. Yeah. I like it too. Yeah. And Danny likes it too, so that's good. Yes. <laughs> and, it, I mean, it's, it's very flattering. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm very fond of that one. That's it. That's my knit. That's all you're knitting. Yes. Are you sure? Well, there's a million hortensias that she's made for me. Oh, yeah. And the chuck jumpers. And what else have you made for me? Oh, my big swirly yes. cardigan. Oh, have you shown that pattern? No, but I'm going to do that. Do, I'll you're going to do, do that yeah. separately. We'll do it. We'll yeah. do a look what mum's knit for me video as well. Okay. So mum is currently wearing her latest make. Mm. And I got her the remnant mm. from so over it when we went up there for the party that never was um, I'm not going to stop going on about that because it was <laughs> hilarious it was really f at the time it was frustrating and then we found the really nice restaurant and we had a great yeah, time and we got the discount really and we got exactly too. and we got the fabric so yes yeah um, but this is a the till the sun goes down Amelia pattern and mum managed to um, cut it out of 80 centimeters of 140 wide rayon <laughs> and I just happened to have 10 meters of uh, satin back crepe that is the right color and you've used the crepe side haven't you yes and so she's used that for the collar, the interior yoke, and you made self-covered buttons, which you really enjoyed, didn't you? Yeah, no, there was a lot of swearing, and I don't swear. No, anymore. she doesn't. So you're sitting in the sewing room with her at that point, and there was like, these little cuss words coming out, and it was like, <laughs> But given, given your aversion to making muslins, it's a good job you have me, isn't it? Because um, <laughs> yes. we looked at the measurements on the pattern, didn't we? Yes. And you wanted to make one size. Yes. And then I told you to do yes. a, a combination of two sizes. You did. And it's worked out really well. It's perfect. Yes. I'm very, very pleased with it. Yes. It's lovely. And uh, this is the simple collar on it. They do have a double pointed collar, which you're going to do with your Liberty fabric, I think, aren't yeah. you? Um, yeah. But you like it so much, you're actually going to use your expensive Liberty fabric. Yes. To, uh, yeah. to make the next shirt. And I did it all properly, all the finishing yes. that Sean has taught me. <laughs> so narrow rolled hems. Yes. That was interesting. That was new. <laughs> yeah, she kept, she kept, <laughs> she has a terrible habit. I'll tell her to do something and she'll do half of it and then she'll start doing this other thing. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, oh no, I've been doing this. And it's like, no mum, don't do that. She's like, but I'm neatening it up. I was like, she, so so I, I got her to sew the first row of stitching and then press it up and then she started, she went at it with the pinking shears and I'm like, what are you doing? And she was like, I'm neatening it so it doesn't fray and it's like, no, 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 don't do that because if you do this and then you do this and then it's all going to be enclosed. <laughs> and it, but it's not neat, but it will be, but it's not neat now, but it will be. And, the, with a with narrow rolled hem, but the more fabric you take away, the more difficult it gets. So she taken all this fabric away and it was, yeah. But yeah, it worked. We got there. 
it we got there and I did these the sleeves the same and yes perfect yes <laughs> so uh, we I actually have a foot that does it all in one go oh, right. but getting that foot to actually work starting it is the tricky point when you've got it started it's beautiful but yeah. The, the trouble is, the types of fabrics that you want to do narrow rolled hems on are also the type of fabrics that slip and don't want to behave. Mm. So getting that to go under the foot and do the things that it's meant to do is uh, more frustrating than having to sew three lines of stitching. Yeah. But yes, self-covered buttons, yeah. bias binding at the neckline and on the facings, yes. uh, narrow rolled hems, yeah. tailor's tacks. Yes, yes. And um, the pattern... Once there were a few little bits in the pattern that were a bit head scratchy, weren't they? Mm. It's got pin tucks. Yes. Yep. So it's very, very beautiful. Nice. And I am so impressed that you got a shirt <laughs> with sleeves out of 80 centimetres of fabric. Oh, frugal. Very <laughs> frugal. We were at one point going to do the sleeves in the crepe as well, but there was just, just enough. Literally. Just. Yeah. A bit so, shorter than I think they were meant to be, but you know. No, they're very nice. And I like the little pleats in them as well. That's I nice. love it. Yeah. It's a really nice pattern. It's good because you're going to use your expensive fabric on it. Yeah. Yes. So there's that one. That was just before we went on holiday, wasn't it? Yeah. The cream one. So. The cream one, yes. Which I wore on holiday. You it's, did, yes. Um, one of the cow neck ones that I've made before. You've made four of them now, haven't you? Yes. And I, I do like them, but they don't sit quite right on the shoulders We me. need to mm. put bra catches on. I said this last time. Yes. And um, lots of people were asking what bra catchers are. So what a bra catcher is, because lots of you were asking, is you get, for example, a piece of bias binding and you fold it together and sew it so that it, it doesn't have any raw edges. They're all enclosed. And then you can catch it in one of the seams, one end, and then you sew a press stud to that end and then a press stud to the free end. So it's like a free floating long piece with a press stud at one end, a popper piece at one end and a popper piece at the other. Mm. And when you put it on, you put it under your bra strap, close it with the press stud so that it forms a loop around your bra strap. And that way it can't fall off because it's anchored to your bra strap. So that's what a bra catcher is. And we need to do those because yes. you'll wear those more, won't you, if they don't miss the Yes, if they don't miss the shoulders. I found that when I wear them over a jumper, mm. it's fine. And that's so, um, it's a good way to winterize your clothes, actually. Yeah. So if you have like a silk, silky top, yeah. a loose fitting one like that, it looks yeah. really nice over some yeah. of your sort of fine, fine knits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very good. And, ah, <laughs> So this was Mum's first time using my overlocker. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Vogue 8972, the one that I did the sew along for. And lots and lots of you were asking for uh, pictures of Mum wearing this because you'd all said, oh, it's lovely, but I would like to see it on somebody who is my age rather than your age. <laughs> and so I am going to... We're going to do a twirl. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you, you, they're comfortable. They're heavy, aren't they? So it's heavy. I mean, it is a. It's um, you wear it spring and winter. But, yeah. Um, it it hangs nicely. Yeah. It, because like of it. the weight weight of it, the, the skirt does mm. hang very nicely. This mm. one has bobbled a little bit. Do you, yes, do you yeah. tumble dry this? You're not meant to no, tumble dry. Obviously, where I've worn it and lent against something, I think. Possibly. So like scuba, yeah, scuba does bobble, and scuba doesn't particularly like being tumble dried. My very expensive Lady McElroy scuba has done this. <laughs> um, so, yes. And that was your wearable muslin. And yeah. we did make a few tweaks to that, didn't we? Because that one, that one still had the back seams in it. Yes. Because the, the pattern that we, well, mum chose was for a woven mm. so we took all the back seams out we uh, made the neck band a little bit shorter than the other one because it didn't the other one wasn't sitting quite as flush as we liked and so this so i i you guys will have seen i've bought this fabric and i wear this fabric a lot in a dress <laughs> and mum keeps saying how much she liked it and would like one mm. so i bought her some i mean she paid for it but i got it for her <laughs> i ordered it for you yeah and then, yeah. this one's just bobbled slightly there. Oh, yeah. I wonder what you're doing to it. Mm -hmm. Mine's not done that. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing was 
that we've got to show you so far, because we'll be doing another one of these in a couple of months, I'm sure, given the size of your stash mm -hmm. and how nervous it makes you and you need to make the things. I need to make the things. Yes. Um, so this is the Rosaria skirt that I bought from the Knitting and Stitching show from Guthrie and Garni. And then this is the navy and black fabric. Mm -hmm. You agree that it's navy under that mm -hmm. light, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, from M. Rosenberg Stitch Fabrics. And the, the, you got the last 1.4 meters of it, didn't mm. you? Mm. So, yes. And then mum had decided that she liked the welt pockets the best out of all the pocket options. So she's got zippered pockets on it, which she's decided that she actually does quite like now. Mm. So it was a little bit, but she wasn't going to put the zips in, were you? No, I was going to have them open, but it, it didn't work. No. So you put the zips in. Mm. So they're not technically the right, they're, they're invisible zips, but it, it, it looks good, it's fine. And I literally took every inch of the material. Um, I think I've only, I've got a tiny little piece left which I practiced the buttons on. Yes. Um, to get the length, and it's not quite as long as I would usually have it. It's very nice though. But I think it's, yeah, yeah, it's good. So it has the button loops, uh, sorry, it has the belt loops. Uh, we've got buttonholes all the way down the front. And the only thing you're gonna change with this is you're gonna pinch out a wedge of, cause it's a, it's not, it's not dead straight, the waistband, mm. but it's not quite curved enough, so we're just going to pinch a little wedge out the back of the waistband for the next one so that you make. So it fits my waistband. Yeah, because you want, you want to make another one of these, don't yes. you? Yes. It's, yep. like, it's a nice girl. Mm. I want to make one of these. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's everything. You've been quite prolific. I think you know, I've been so Given that she's been doing quilting <laughs> yes. in, between in between as well. <laughs> Which is my main hobby. <laughs> yes, the dressmaker's just a sideline. <laughs> the knitting's to keep her bit her hands no, I mean, busy. I'm enjoying things. it, but... Um, that I love. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This dress shirt. Right shape, right colours, right uh, pattern. It works everything. Mm. I'm very pleased with it. Yeah. Very I'm still pleased. amazed you got it out of 80 centimetres. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, that's that's the lot. That's everything. So if you have any questions about any of the patterns that we've put in today's video, let us know in the comments down below and we'll do our best to answer them. And I'm going to try and set it up so that mum can reply to comments because for some reason you can see them, but she can't reply to them. Which and is, I do try when yes. someone asks a question and I just get error. Yeah, so it just keeps saying error to her. We've, we've set it up so that Dad can reply, and a few of you have experienced that in the comments. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're going to we're gonna set Mum up with that as well. So, um, this is wise. <laughs> well, quite. Quite. <laughs> um, anyway, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I really hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye! Bye. Ta-ra! <laughs>